Hi, we're going to take a look at a new temperature controlled soldering station from Weller. It's the WE1010, not to be confused with the WT model or WX or something, other models that they've got which are higher priced. This is actually a new one which came out a couple of months ago to not much, if any, fanfare at all, really. And I believe it's only sold in the North American market at present. And I actually got this one from uh, DigiKey, and it, the good thing about it is that it is low cost. It basically undercuts their existing 50 watt model, which was the WESD51. Um, and that one's been around a long time, which was a 50 watt uh, soldering station. And a lot of people like it and swear by it and all that sort of stuff. Some people don't like it. Um, but this is a new new one which is actually cheaper than that. This one, I got this for about, uh, I think it was $118 on special, but it's about $120, I think at DigiCare it's $130 now. Um, but it basically puts it on par with the venerable Heiko uh, FX D, which is pretty much, you know, the recommended in entry level iron by a lot of people. But it's 70 watts as opposed to 50. It's a funky new uh, digital readout form, for a nice small form factor. So I thought we'd take a look at it and compare it to an FX AAA D because I, I didn't have a D model, so I went out and got one. Uh, this is going to be a 240 volt model as opposed to the 110 volt model. I have to run it from a transformer, but that won't make any difference because the actual uh, 70 watts is not derived from what mains voltage you use. It's derived from the uh, power driver inside the thing. Um, so. Let's do a, a kind of like a little shootout between these two and see what's what. I mean, the FX AAAD goes for about $110 to $120 uh, US dollars, depending on where you get it from. It's uh, obviously can be more expensive in other countries like Australia and things like that. But they're basically, let's say, they're on par in uh, price. Ooh, look shrink wrapped for our protection. Um, both of them come very well packed by the way uh, with in their purpose design uh, corrugated boxes so no worries there. Now of course both Heiko and Weller are two huge industry names been around for a very long time. My first uh, soldering station was a Heiko 926 and then they graduated to the 936 and then they went to this uh, new funky look um, FX triple eight here, which I've got here, and then the FX triple eight D with the digital readout. And Weller, of course, uh, started with their traditional uh, fixed temperature Curie point tip, and that actually used the uh, Curie point effect inside the tip. So you get different temperature chips, and to change the temperature, you change the tip. But of course, I don't recommend anyone get a fixed temperature soldering station. If you're serious about your electronics at all, you should, at a minimum, I recommend the FX uh, uh d which is, you know, at that sort of, you know, for 110 bucks, you should be, you shouldn't be skimping on your soldering iron. You should at least spend that amount of money on a good temperature uh, controlled station. But of course, I've done a video on like a cheapest chips, like $25 Heiko ripoff. Heiko 936 ripoff that you can get, and it's kind of, yeah, okay, you know, if you're really strapped for cash, then that's okay. But if you want the genuine deal, then, you know, pony up like 110, 120 bucks for uh, something like this. So basically the Heiko comes with a uh, 65 watt iron and the Weller comes with a 70 watt iron. So, I'm, you know, I'm going to call them pretty much equivalent uh, in that respect, but technically the Ella de Weller does have an extra uh, 5 watts there. But let's take a look at the uh, case. The Heiko is, some people hate it. Some people absolutely detest this, but it actually was uh, designed by style, by a famous industrial designer, I believe. Uh, I'll find details on that and uh, put him in. There you go. It's even got the dude's signature on there. Design Toshiluki Kita. I have no idea, but yeah, it's got somebody's signature, so, you know, a bit of pride's gone into it. And I, I've i sort of come to like it. I didn't like the colour scheme at first, but look, it's, it's small and narrow and tall and doesn't take up much space on your bench, and that's what you want. The Weller actually takes up much more footprint, including the uh, stand as a slightly bigger uh, footprint as well. But... The Heiko has a fixed power cord on it, which I don't like. The Weller has standard IEC power cord on it. I think that's technically better, but you pay a price in terms of a bigger unit. I don't really like the colour in the Weller. I kind of find it a disturbing sort of pale aqua type colour. <laughs> 
Now, as far as the uh, connectors are concerned, I mean, you shouldn't have to take them off too many times, but if you're moving your iron around, I don't know, you might. Your Heiko has your traditional, um, what is that, uh, six-pin DIN there, and it, it feels like a cheap dicky DIN connector. I, I've never liked it. They, they've had that since my original iron, the 926 from like 30 years ago. The Weller... Uh, uses a also a uh, DIN connector as plastic instead of the metal uh, shell, but at least it has a proper spin lock. It feels better. The Heiko just feels, you know, how you're doing. It's just sliding around in there, and the Weller actually, there, there you go, it locks in place. It's, it's still a bit dicky, but it, it just feels a bit better. Eh, slight edge to the Weller. As for the iron stand itself, the Heiko is the clear winner. And not only uh, does it come with, I prefer the sponges with the uh, split in there, but it also comes with your um, steel wool cleaning stuff, and that goes in there, and you can just clean your tip like that. Beautiful. And it feels solid, uh, you know, it feels solid and stable, and it's really quite nice. The only downside is that there's really, I mean, you can put your tips in there, your spare uh, tips in there, but that's, you know, it's, it's not great. But apart from that, um, tip storage, it is absolutely brilliant. I like it. The Weller, on the other hand, is like a throwback to the 1970s. It's got the stupid, you know, two-part, and this just slips in the top with the stupid spring thing. I always hated these. They're horrible. It just feels, feels dicky, and it, it it doesn't even sit flat. I don't like it at all. I guess the only um, saving grace is that it's got um, uh, spaces for your tips here, but that's about it. A clear winner for the Heiko. All right, now let's have a look at the uh, pencils that come with them. Uh, the Weller has the WEP 70, 23 volts at 70 watts, and the Heiko is the FX 8801, 26 volts at 65 watts. So in terms of uh, nominal power uh, capability, the Weather Weller has the edge there. The Weller is also cheaper as a replacement um, iron. Um, the prices do vary, but I've got, say, uh, from the same place, basically uh, 55 US dollars and like 70 over $70 uh, replacement for the Heiko. But these things don't fail all that often, but it's good to know. They've basically got the same uh, grip length to tip. So, you know, you put your fingers here and the distance is around about the same. I've got to say, I prefer the Weller in terms of like that rubber. It's got the ridges around there. It just... it. It feels a bit better. The Heiko's always... Been, it, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with the Heiko. I'm used to it. I've been using it for um, a long, long time, and it's fine. But I kind of... I think I prefer the Weller. It's a bit uh, thinner as well compared to the Heiko. The Weller also has a plastic spindle for the tip like this. So to actually get it off is... It should be easier. I haven't uh, tried to do it while it's hot. But in theory, that should be easier than the all-metal one used on the... Heiko like this. So they basically are clamp exactly the same way like that, but the way that the tips attach, very different. So if we have a look at the Heiko up the uh, top here, you slide the tip off and you can see the ceramic heating element inside there. And you've got to be careful not to uh, damage uh, these, of course, when you take them apart. And it's just got the hollow tip, which just slides over that. And the Weller actually is uh, different. It's, once again, a hollow tip there, but you can't actually see. So I don't know, the Weller just, like, and that just moves around in there. The Weller just seems a little bit dicky. I, but, hey, as long as the uh, performance and reliability is there, um, which remains to be seen, then, okay. Anyway, it's just different. Now, as far as the uh, supplied tip goes, the Heiko's on top here. It's supplied with a conical tip, and I hate conical tips. Just don't use these. Get yourself a nice chisel, uh, a couple of different size uh, chisel points. And the Weller here might look like it has a conical tip as well, but it's actually the uh, ETA series tip, which is actually a one6 millimeter 
chisel tip. And you might see that if we heat it up and clean it up a bit better, but trust me. So I'm gonna say that the Weller has the better supplied tip. Now the Weller actually uses the ET series uh, tips and these are also compatible with the uh, WESD 50 iron, the older one, but basically not compatible with any further um, irons in Weller's range that I'm aware of, none of your higher end uh, professional ones. And your Heikos use the uh, T18 tip and they're available uh, everywhere. And they're even, the Heiko is even backward. The latest one is still even, although not officially, backward compatible with the original 900M tips, um, which I had, you know, back in not only the 936 iron, but the 926 going back like 30 years. They still work. They still kept the same tips. So, um, but the T18s do work. A bit, their performance is uh, better in the latest iron. So you should be using the uh, T18 tips. It doesn't matter which iron you've got. Do not buy them on eBay. Do not, because you'll get the fake ones and buy them from a, a reputable official uh, Weller or Heiko supplier. There's nothing worse than crap quality one hung low brand, uh, you know, imitation tips. Made in Mexico versus made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. And in terms of uh, like ergonomics using it, of course, the Weller one is actually longer, but uh, thinner. The Weller one has a much better feeling. Oh, look at that. Oh, I could fondle that all day. Much better than the Heiko one. There's nothing wrong with the Heiko. It's just that the Weller with its rubber up here and its nice uh, strain relief at the end just feels like a better quality iron, not by a huge amount, but anyway, um, and they're both about a similar sort of uh, weight, but the longer Weller actually could maybe get in the way a bit more. I don't know. I don't really like this hugely long ones, um, but I have not used this in anger yet. And I think the Weller has a thinner, sort of uh, lighter, more flexible uh, cable on it than the Heiko's. It's it's still, you know, nice and flexible, but it's just a little bit thicker. And I don't know, it feels, feels like the Weller doesn't get in the way as much, but there's not much in it. And I think both of them have pretty much a similar center of gravity just over where you actually uh, grip the thing, which is probably, it's hard to tell with the cable, but it's probably where you want it. Um, yeah, both of them are fairly equally balanced, I'd say. Although I could imagine uh, some people preferring that uh, longer Weller iron. It just it gets the cable out of the way, like further away uh, from the job at hand than the Heiko, which tends to like just flop right down at the end like that, whereas the Weller just uh, goes out a bit further. So, yeah, if you don't like your cables in the way, the Weller's probably a better choice there. And the Heiko is made in Malaysia, um, designed in uh, Japan, of course, they're a Japanese uh, company. And the Weller is made in Mexico, designed and engineered in Germany. Hi to all my German viewers. And both of them do actually have the earthed tip. So, yeah, just like don't solder live stuff. They're both the same. So that's what you expect. Awesome. And by far the best part of a new soldering iron. Oh, you get a brand new sponge. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Oh, oh. Could watch that all day. You just don't get the same excitement from the Heiko. Sorry. Uh. All right, let's pair up both irons for the first time. I don't like the Heiko switch on the side. I've, it's always kind of bugged me. So anyway, let's switch them both on. Much bigger uh, display, but uh, Pete, some people like the LED display. But that, there we go. We're heating up. We're heating up. Don't know what it's heating up to. It's got 720, a bloody Fahrenheit garbage. Anyway, so, sorry, they're not uh, equal in terms of, uh, we got Celsius versus Fahrenheit, whatever it's set to. I think they take, whoa, the new tip, the new tip smell. Woo, yeah, come on. I think, the, yeah, the Heiko's already at uh, 350. Celsius and the Heiko, it looks like the Heiko is the winner. So the 350 Celsius is equivalent to 662 Fahrenheit on here and just replaying the footage there, it uh, it, it was two, maybe three seconds quicker, the Heiko, so slight edge there, according, of course, to the temperature on here. But these are both quality irons. I'm sure they sense the temperature very well. That's their job. Now, after heating up and cleaning that, you can hopefully see the chisel tip on the Weller. It's a 1.6 millimeter. 
As far as changing the temperature goes, very obvious on the Weller, it's got an up-down button. There we go. Oh, that, that velocity is really probably faster. Anyway, 662. There you go. So you saw that there was a little bit of a uh, time out there before it actually went to the back to the uh, sensed display. I don't know why they couldn't have used the kept the temperature up there and and adjusted the one down here. Um, I would I would have kept that sense in um, up the on the primary display there. Anyway, they've decided not to. Let's see if we turn it off. Does it go back to six six two or do you have to store it? Let's have a look. Yes, it does. Nice. So without reading the manual, I'm going to press the menu button here and see what we can do. Two min. Uh, I would say that's the uh, auto... Uh, oh, uh, standby. Yes, it goes into uh, standby to save your uh, tip. Of course, if you leave it running at that temperature all the time, um, you know, if you're not using the thing, but then how does it determine? There's, there's no sensor on the uh, iron itself, so... I don't know, maybe it, uh, it senses the temperature drop um, by, you know, because as soon as you do a solder joint, um, it's going to do that. I'm just going to leave it, see if it times out. As far as the manuals go, this is the Weller one here, and uh, it's for the WE1, the WEP70, and the PH70, and, well, that's, that's it. Like, that and the specs, that's it. I mean, everything else is the other language, and if we have a look at the um, Heiko, the Heiko is, even though it's just a, like a single sheet like this, I like that it uh, doesn't, you know, it's just it's another language on the back. No, look at this. Much more comprehensive. Initial setup, all that sort of stuff. Changing the set temperature, how to do all that kind of stuff. And what that? performing temperature adjustment, restriction on setting changes, password function, maintenance, troubleshooting guide, tip styles. You get nothing of that. The Willer does actually have a pictorial thing, and they've got, yeah, scanning the barcodes, okay, that's a bit jazzy, but uh, they've got the wanky little diagrams. Oh, must be set back 50 millimetres from the back of the bench. Tick. Um, and plug it in, ET series tips, ET phone home. But that's um, basically it. So menu goes uh, standby, offset, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and lock. Because you want to, sometimes you want to lock the temperature, but... Yeah, most people wouldn't. And yep, there we go. Uh, two, I'm not sure when it started. I was too busy recording the other thing. But yeah, after sure enough, after the two minutes, it's uh, uh, gone into sleep mode and it's going down. I don't know what it goes down to. But um, of course, you can set that time. Two minutes is ridiculous. Um, but you can set that up to 99 minutes. So if I take that out, the stand, of course, it's still going. It's still going. So like... There's basically nothing I can, <laughs> basically nothing I can do to start that again. Like, that's just, oh no, here we go. No, it's coming back up. It's obviously sensed something. I don't know. I, ah, uh, geez, that's not great, is it? So yeah, because these aren't like, you know, three or five second heat up irons like your professional, your JBCs and your uh, Pacers and your Metcals and all those, you know, like really, you know, high end $500,000 irons that don't heat up in a couple seconds. You can't, this uh, like power off function is great. Like if you forget it, um, like overnight, you leave it on and then, you know, which is fine, but not for like just general uh, daily operation and uh, stuff like that. So you're better off setting to, that to either off if you can or 99 minutes anyway let's change that to celsius because well that's no let's change whoa all the way with lbj 99 can you actually set it yep there we go turn it off no i set it to 99 minutes 99 is decent all right there we go i assume we can go like that yep so offset maybe um that's a calibration that must be calibration there you go so degrees celsius lock Woo! woot so it's a good thing this um, menu system is relatively easy because, um, uh, well, I haven't figured it all out yet, but uh, because it's not in the manual. So there you go. Like, And you saw when we power up, it's actually got three presets there, but it looks like, um, well, I don't know how you would, do, we, do you just hold it down? Like, no, no, that's the timeout, offset, all right. You can't just hold it down like that. Hmm, I don't think it's got any presets. So let's put the Weller on the sponge test. Here we go. 
And we should see that temperature drop. There we go, very substantially. This is what irons do, of course. They've only, only got so much uh, thermal mass. Wow, that's going ridiculously low, isn't it? So this is it. I do like the uh, update rate on that, but that's just nuts. Right? That's going all the way down to like 140 degrees. Wow. That's crazy. It's going to take all the way. It's going to take a long time to get back up there too. Twiddle your thumbs. It's terrible, Muriel. All right, let's do the same test with the Haco. And to be consistent, I'll just use the same uh, sponge here. And we should get our live update. Come on. Wow, it's staying there. It stayed there a lot longer, didn't it? There you go. The Haco is holding up a lot better. Definitely. Now, whether or not that's... It, it, well, as I said, these are both professional irons. I'm sure the temperature sensing is very decent on these on the tip but this is holding up much better if i simply keep that on there and boil in the sponge water it's like it's dropped down to say two 230 ish but the weller dropped down much further than that and it does it quicker and it drops quicker too so that indicates that the weller at least uh by this test doesn't have the same thermal capacity wow it's terrible like leave it on there and it's 100 and 140-ish. No, winner's got to be the Haco out of that. All right, now it's time to see if we can burn the lead on this thing. Nah, nice. 350, survives that just fine. Brilliant. Let's try the Haco. Both have burn-proof leads. No worries. Oh, and just in case your soldering iron firmware locks up, Hold both buttons and power up, and it resets factory defaults. That doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me. So there basically were no um, operational uh, instructions in the Weller manual. So I scanned in the barcode, took me over, defaulted to German, and I had to go to operating instructions here. And we can finally, which is okay, I've got no problems with uh, not having a manual in the box. That's fine. And we're in like Flynn. Uh, but unfortunately, it's exactly the same manual as the one that's printed out. It doesn't explain, like, what offset or how the lock works or anything like that. Um, that's just... It's just hopeless. It goes... It just doesn't have proper operating instructions. So how do you adjust the temperature on the Heiko? It's only got an up key... And an enter key. Uh, and like, you just go here like this and it does nothing. It's infuriating. So you hold down uh, enter like that and you can adjust the digit. You can't go up and down. That is infuriating. Unbelievable. Why couldn't they put another button on there? For goodness sake. Yeah, they've got the nice funky design. They didn't hire a designer for the bloody user interface, did they? Hopeless. Okay, I'm going to see how long it takes for uh, to the irons to go from uh, 350 to 450. So we'll go, ready, steady, go. 450, come on, you can do it. Oh, where's the weller? It doesn't show us. Yes, it does. There we go. Nah. Heiko's going to win. Yep, transition in 100 degrees. Wins by a good... Oh, jeez. Slow as a wet week, the Weller. That's won by a good 10, 12 seconds, hasn't it? Crazy. No contest there. So let's actually try that again, but set it to a lower temperature, 250 this time, and we'll do it simultaneously. I think the sponge test is actually quite, you know, it's got uniform uh, uh, moisture across there. And I think it's quite a decent, quite a decent test. The Weller dropped first, and the Weller's dropping down to, look at that, whereas the Heiko is holding in there, it's only dropped by 10 degrees, 12 degrees. No contest. Heiko's the winner.
There you go, it's still climbing up. So much for your extra uh, 5 watts inside this iron, 70 watts compared to 65. It's all about the, look, that's the hot end, don't touch. It's all about the uh, design of the ceramic heater element and how it uh, uh, conducts the heat through, and the tip design and everything else. And, you know, it's quite a lot of engineering which goes into uh, a decent soldering iron pencil and tip design. Mind you, I um, set out to find if the Heiko actually has a uh, factory reset, and it actually does. It's not mentioned in the manual, but here's how you do it. Hold down both buttons, power on, and up, and U. And U is factory reset. And now it's actually set it back to uh, Fahrenheit, as you saw, 750 Fahrenheit. Whereas out of the box, this one was set to Celsius, wasn't it? Yes, it was. How do we change it back? Actually, the manual I've got doesn't seem to have the um, Celsius Fahrenheit like settings in there, but I got another manual online, and sure enough, you hold down the uh, up button in there, and we're in like Flynn, and it is setting um, 01 to change from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. All right, so we want to select 1 and F or C. C, thank you very much. Oh, we're done, surely. We're done, come on, get us out. What's Y? <laughs> yes, there we go, we're out. We're back to a much more sensible Celsius, none of that Fahrenheit rubbish. And I've been trying to uh, test the temperature of this tip, but using my knockoff Heiko temperature sensor, but even with solder on that tip, the best I can get is 260, I think I got 270 before. Hmm, but the Heiko is pretty good. Eight degrees, I'm pretty happy with that. So, what's up with the Weller? Hmm, try that again. We've got solder on the tip, so it should get good thermal transfer, but that's saying it's like 270. That's way out. Okay, let's use a better thermometer here. That's got the fluke. There we go. Oh, jeez. Look at that. What a Bobby Dazzler. All right. I can't go much higher than that. The thermocouples are not rated for it, but jeez, that's practical. Oh, that's bang on. Let's try the same with the Weller. No, once again, it's consistently low. It's like 20 degrees low. Wow. Um, I didn't play with that offset, did I? So I'm actually going to try and fix that. I mean, geez, I shouldn't have to. But let's go like plus 20 on that. How do I select? Can I just select it like that? Is that it? Okay. Let's give it a go now. Yeah, there we go. I fixed it. <laughs> I had to calibrate the Weller. Unbelievable. And the Heiko actually has uh, the same functionality. You can actually hold, uh, in terms of offset, um, you can adjust. You can go into adjust there. I won't do it, but you can adjust the temperature offset. It's basically got the same capability as the Weller, but the Heiko does actually have presets as well. So if you want to uh, do your presets, you've got to actually um, go into the preset mode here. You've got to go up to, obviously, 11, and go from zero, which is normal mode, to one mode, which is preset. So by default, it comes with uh, five factory presets from 300 to 700 Fahrenheit. It's all in uh, Fahrenheit rubbish. Um, so we go to, we simply press up and that will give us, uh, will allow us to um, choose our preset selection like this. So if we go to P1, whoop, there we go, 316. So it's going to go back down. So that actually makes up for the crap user interface really, not being able to just tweak the temperature. At least you got five presets, you know, you can set one, okay, this is for my normal, uh, you know, low thermal mass, you know, through hole parts or something like that. Next one might be, you know, uh, some uh, like larger thermal mass heat sinks or through hole boards or, you know, something like that. So you can just easily swap between them. It's not too bad. It's better than Weller, which seems to have none, even though it's got the three displays there for it. Now this Weller is supposed to have an easy to change tip, um, so I j just turned it off. Oh. oh yeah? Oh yeah? 
Trust me, it's still hot. And can we? Hello? Oh, oh look, I've taken the paint. Taken the paint off it. Don't don't put your hot tips in this crap soldering iron stand. Oh, look at that. No, oh, I can smell it too. Garbage. All right, so much for that. Oh, maybe if I tip it, but I don't want to if I put pressure on it. No. But hey, at least it's better than the hay care, which you have to <laughs> get off <laughs> like that. But once, once you do, then the tips generally just fall off, though. But some are a bit tighter. Depends. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, set both of them to 300 uh, Celsius because it's a nice round number. I've got the uh, same tip on each one, which is a 3.2 millimeter uh, chisel. The um, Heiko one looks a bit wider, but they both claim to be 3.2 millimeters. And uh, we're just going to heat up identical pads on this board with uh, a ground plane and uh, see which one wins. All right, so I've got both irons. Oh, left-handed iron feels weird. I've got uh, solder on the bottom of both of them. I'm just gonna whack them on here and see. Uh, oh, they're both fine and dandy. They're heating up the pad, I'd say, pretty equally. And they're not getting stuck. In fact, the weller hasn't actually uh, hasn't dropped. The temperature on both of them is 300. Trust me. I find the weller a bit disturbing. Every time I go to clean it on the sponge, it like, it can it just drop significantly. Yeah, I did probably <laughs> did it a bit too long there, but still, like, I, I don't know. It just takes too long to recover. It's a bit disturbing. Anyway, I've set both of them to uh, 270, and we will try that again, but Okay, here we go. Woo! Smoking. Okay, just see if we can heat up that pad again at 270. Yeah, the Heiko's doing it. Just. Ah, oh, the well is just. I, I, I would call that. I'm gonna call that maybe even. I don't know. It's hard. Oh, maybe is the weller working a bit better? Hang on. And yes, I'm using uh, lead-free solder here, by the way. The weller is doing it a little bit better at 270. Let's try it again. I'm going to swap them around. Just, to, yeah, no. Maybe this one's a bit, maybe they're not symmetrical pads. <laughs> anyway, there's not much in it. Okay, let's try both of them on a bit of uh, copper clad board. So I'll just put down some flux there because our board is pretty crap, although it's fairly equally clean. So let's try uh, the Heiko at 300, shall we? Um, this is lead free rubbish. So let's go. See what she can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's doing that. Okay, no problems at uh, 300. Excellent. Let's try the exact same thing with the Weller at 300. And here we go. Come on. Oh, not. It's not going to spread. It's not going to spread as, uh, spread as well. Oh, no, okay, in the end, I think maybe the Heiko might have just had the edge there, but there's not a huge amount in it. They can both do uh, ground planes at 300. Okay, let's put it back to 280. The board is cooled down, so let's see if the Heiko can oh, do a ground plane. Come on, come on. Nah, nah. But you wouldn't expect it to, really. Uh, no, uh, it's, it's struggling. It's struggling. Let's do the same struggle with the Weller, shall we? Here we go. At 280. Uh, nah. Nah. Not going to do it. So one is not spectacularly better. Oh, 
I don't know. Maybe. Maybe is it a bit better? Not sure. Oh, yeah, maybe. Look at that. Look at that. Hello, Weller. At 218, you'll notice that the temperature's not dropping either on the display. Let me try that again with the Heiko. Maybe I just didn't leave the Heiko there long enough. No, there we, yeah, there we go. Hang on. So put enough heat into it to start moving around. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No. They're probably equal. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to call that. So I think I'll call the soldering uh, quits there. That's really one that I, I wanted to test is the uh, thermal performance. And the Heiko actually published their thermal uh, drops. They've actually uh, qualified how much the tip temperature uh, drops and all that sort of stuff. If I can find a similar sort of data for the uh, Weller, then I'll include it uh, in the edit. But, it, but Heiko famously uh, do that. Uh, for their uh, for this particular iron so um, and compare it with the original model showing that this one has a bit of better uh, thermal recovery and like there's no point doing other types of fine soldering all that sort of stuff I've had a play around and they're both probably equally balanced the feel of both of them I don't really have a huge preference I guess the rubber on the Weller feels a bit better than the sort of the whatever that it's kind of rubbery, but it's not it's not the same sexy feel as the Weller. But anyway, there you go. That is the Heiko FX Triple Eight D, and the brand spanking new, uh, probably only available in North America at the moment. Hence the NA on the end of the part number stands for uh, North America. But they're basically the same price. Um, in fact, I found this one on special for 105 US dollars and uh, it's you can get the Heiko for just under 110 US dollars depending on where you look around and really there's probably not a huge amount in it I mean I find it a bit disturbing how the temperature of this thing drops I mean the the Heiko heats up faster and uh, this thing seems based on like the sponge test and other a uh, couple of other and the uh, ramp up uh, test for 100 degrees, the Weller doesn't seem to have as good a capacity as the Heiko. But when you actually put it on the energy through the tip, the heat through the tip onto a ground plane, they're pretty much equal in uh, performance, or seem to be. So it's not a huge amount in it. Now, in terms of the range of tips, they both have an excellent range of uh, tips available. Uh, I'll try and uh, get some prices and put them up on the tips. Which one will last longer? I don't know. Everyone's got their own opinion. Everyone says, hey, go tips are shit. Hey, go tips are great. Well, the tips are shit. Well, the tips are great. So, you know, like <laughs> six one, half a dozen of the other. But look, to pick a winner out of this, it's really hard. The Weller, I like much prefer the uh, just the up down user interface on this thing, and I love the it's more it seems to be more instant live readout. The Heiko might actually even have a a, a lag on there because look, it just doesn't do anything until like it sort of you know hits a mode there where it sort of goes down. But anyway, the Heiko might have a bit more thermal capacity I don't know but in the uh, some real world testing that I've done here it doesn't seem to make a difference I much prefer the Weller from a uh, just a standpoint point of view the stand is better um, there's absolutely no doubt about that the Weller's really kind of a bit dicky so in that respect I'd probably maybe have the Heiko it does have the presets but the user interface for adjusting the temperature up and down if you just want to tweak it a little bit is more of a pain in the ass. The well is better in that respect. So, uh, but it takes up more bench space and it just, and the stand feels a bit dicky, but the iron's better. So it, I, like, I don't know, I can't call the winner on this. It, it's probably going to come down to personal preference. I, I just don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. The This new Weller is certainly not a Heiko killer. Um, it's the same price range. It's obviously shooting for the same target market, but it doesn't kill it by any uh, stretch. And a quick teardown of both of them. We've looked inside the uh, analog version of the Heiko before, but we'll just have a look inside the digital one. Very neat and tidy. Of course, this is only this is the 240 volt version. Both of them are um, single mains uh, voltage only. So don't buy the wrong one. Don't buy one from a foreign market if it's not the correct one. You have to buy your local 220 volt version or 110 volt version. Take your pick. So this is the 240 volt. Looks 
you know, I won't go into detail, but that looks, you know, really quite well built. Transformer looks good quality. Wiring, all the earth in's good. No wackers whatsoever. Let's have a look inside. <laughs> kind of two-piece. Um, and once again, we've got the earth down there. No problems whatsoever. It's all kind of exposed. How you doing? Oh, look. They got a little inline fuse. That's yeah, but anyway, that's a big ass bloody poly switch, isn't it? And there's the front side of the weller for those playing along at home. Jeez, they've gone to town on the um, membrane uh, button contacts there. Processor must be under there. Um, it's all neat and tidy. They've just got, you know, a nice little uh, custom wraparound heatsink there. No problem. They're both equally good build quality. No worries. But I must say the uh, Heiko is built more like a brick dunny. If you're looking for an iron that, you know, feels like you can drop it, you know, drag it off the bench, drop it on the ground and probably survive, the Heiko is the winner. The Weller feels with its plastic sort of like, there's there's no screws, there's just two screws holding it in the back. So it, it'd just explode if, you, if it fell off the bench, I think. I'm not going to do a drop test, but yeah, it's just, this one's built like a brick dunny. This one's, it, it just feels it's not nearly as robust. And it's actually kind of hard to convey how like sturdy this one feels once it's all together. It, it might look a bit silly, you know, with the design of it, but it really, once it's together, it really feels nice and solid. So I know it's a bit disappointing, but sorry, I'm not going to call a winner on that one. They're both going to do a decent job for the price. They're both good entry-level uh, irons. Although, once again, I've been using the Heiko's uh, for like 30 years. The 926, the 936, and the FXR888. This is the first time I've had the 888D, but it's basically exactly the same, but with the d uh, digital control. I actually prefer the analog version, but I don't even think they sell the analog version, the FX888. I think you can only buy the 888D. Um, yeah, the analog one's just fine with the knob, you know, like, give me a knob. But Anyway, yeah, they're both decent irons. So anyway, I'm sure everyone will have their own opinion. And if you want to discuss it, comments down below, EV Blog Forum down below. All the fanboys will come out, no doubt. But uh, yeah, for like a hundred and just over a hundred bucks, they're both pretty good value. So if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. And yes, I will try and uh, maybe get some others in the same price bracket. There, it may, I think there's a quick one which might even be uh, cheaper. So I wouldn't mind uh, trying that one out as well. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to stop using my Triple Eight D. But this one's all right too. Catch you next time.